Now, when you want to do a vertical stretch on an inverse variation function, we know that the stretch part is controlled by this value here, the A value or the K value sometimes. So whatever this value here is, if that value is, for example, greater than 1, we know we're going to have a vertical stretch. Well, how exactly do we do a vertical stretch with an inverse variation function? Well, before we talk about that, we first need to talk about something called the corner points. Notice that on this graph of my inverse variation parent function, that's y equals 1 over x, these points right here, we call those the corner points. And those are just the points on each one of the different, uh, each one of the two pieces here that represent, you know, this corner where it kind of, you know, makes the, the change from going down to going across right here. All right. So these corner points right here, it turns out, they are controlled by this value here, the a value or the k value. And in particular, notice that for the parent function, y equals 1 over x, we could, if we wanted to, we could rewrite this this equation, this formula, if you want to think of it that way. Instead of writing it as y equals 1 over x, if we multiply both sides of this equation by x, then we would get x times y. And if we multiply this side by x, well, then the x's cancel out, and we essentially get x times y equals 1, which is just kind of a different way of saying that the inverse variation function in the inverse variation function, the relationship between x and y is that x times y always has to be equal to 1. Well, in particular, if we ask ourselves, what number is it that we could multiply times itself to get 1? In other words, is there a value that we could have x be equal, x and y both be equal to the same number, so that when we multiply them together, we get 1? Well, it's not too hard to see. That number is just going to be 1. 1 times 1 equals 1. Now, obviously, x and y could be many other different values besides just 1, but if x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1, these numbers represent the corner points. When x is 1, y is 1. That's that corner point right there. All right. In this case, we have if x is negative 1, if x is negative 1 and y is negative 1, that represents that corner point right there. So the corner points are always exactly one unit away from each one of the asymptotes for the parent function, the corner points are one unit away. Well, let's take a look at this inverse variation function, that is the inverse variation function with a vertical stretch of 4. Well, again, if I kind of rewrite this as x times y equals 4, in other words, I just kind of you know multiply both sides of this equation by x, then I can see that, okay, well, this function, in this function, the relationship between x and y is x times y always has to be equal to 4. And again, if I ask myself for the particular value that x and y could be if they are the same number, what's that number, x times y, to make it equal to 4? Well, that number is going to be 2, because 2 times 2 is equal to 4. And if I wanted to graph this particular inverse variation function right here, that is with a vertical stretch of 4, I would need to move my corner points so that the corner points are not one unit away from my center point here, but they need to be two units away from my center point. So that would be, here's my center point, 1, 2, and 1, 2 this way. That's going to put my corner point right here, and it's going to put this corner point right here. So that one's two units away and two units away from that asymptote. This is two units away this direction, two units this direction. Now, if I were to graph this inverse variation function with a vertical stretch of four, it would look something like this. So that's what a vertical stretch of 4 looks like on the inverse variation function. Let's try a vertical stretch of 9. Vertical stretch of 9, and again, I'm going to kind of rewrite this so that I write it as x times y equals 9. And again, I want to ask myself, what's the number in order to find my corner points? What's the number that if I multiply x times y and it's the same number, 
will give me 9. Well, that's going to be 3 times 3. 3 times 3 equals 9. And this tells me the corner points for the inverse variation function that has a vertical stretch of 9. So let's grab this one. So if I'm 3 units away, my corner point's going to be 3 units away from each of my asymptotes. Well, that's going to be this point right here. It's 3 units away from each of the asymptotes. And let's see. 2, 3, 2, 3. And here is where my new corner points are going to be if I have a inverse variation function with a vertical stretch of 9. So if I graph that, it's going to look something like that. And like that. 